Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be evaluating a radical expression. We have an infinite radical, the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus dot dot dot, and we're going to evaluate this. I know there has been some questions about whether these expressions converge, and they do. So, I'll, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to call this expression, and that's going to go for both methods, but I'm going to call this whole thing x. And then I would like to cube both sides. When I cube both sides, the outermost cube root is going to disappear, leaving us with 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus the cube root of 6 plus dot dot dot, so on and so forth. And the right hand side is going to be x cubed. Now with these kinds of expressions with nested radicals, notice that um, the expression contains itself. So we have the same, the original expression one more time, and you know that is equal to x. So from here we do get a cubic equation, x cubed equals x plus 6. I know this is easy to guess, and we'll talk about this a little later, but I just want to say that uh, with this uh, method, I want to use Cardano's formula, which is kind of fun, and I believe we mentioned this before, and some people were asking if I could, you know, go over the Cardano's formula, how to solve a cubic in general. So that's what we're going to do here. To uh, use the Cardano's formula, I'm going to start with an identity. So let's expand a plus b quantity cubed. Now, as you know from binomial theorem, this is equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed, but I'm going to use a different version of this formula, which goes like this, a cubed plus b cubed, and then the terms in the middle, the two terms, I'm going to factor out 3ab, and that's going to give me times a plus b. Great. Now, this is nice, but I would like to put everything on the same side. In order to be able to use, you know, Cardano's formula or method, I'm going to put everything on the left hand side. So it's going to be minus 3ab times a plus b. And then a cubed plus b cubed as a quantity, I'm just going to put that in parentheses and subtract it. And the whole thing is equal to zero. Great. Now, how do we go from this to a cubic equation? Uh, we're going to basically, the idea is to turn the cubic into a quadratic. And we kind of do something similar for the quartic. Uh, you turn it into a cubic, which can then be solved by turning that into a quadratic. And of course, there's another method for quartics as well, so on and so forth. Anyways, so here I'm going to use substitution. As you know, substitution is one of my favorite methods. So let's go ahead and uh, name this a plus b x. And that gives us an interesting equation, x cubed minus 3ab x minus the quantity a cubed plus b cubed equals zero. Now this is a cubic equation in x. And obviously one of the solutions of this cubic is a plus b because we said that x equals a plus b, right? So it's one of the solutions. What about the other solutions? Can you find them? Okay, that's something to think about. Now this is my cubic, but we were given something else, right? What were we given? We were given x cubed, and obviously if you put everything on the same side here, you're going to get x cubed minus x minus 6 equals 0. So that's my cubic, right? So I'm going to compare these two equations. And while I compare them, I notice that the coefficient of x is negative 1 or negative 3ab. So they're going to be equal to each other. So from here I get 3ab equals 1, which means ab is equal to 1 third. Awesome. And what about the constant term? I do see an a cubed plus b cubed with the minus sign. I do see a 6 with the minus sign. Therefore, they're equal. So I can write it as a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 6. So I kind of have like a, I should, I should probably write that here. So I, I, I have a system that looks like a cubic system. But in fact, it is quadratic. Why? You'll see why in a little bit. So now if I cube both sides in the first equation, I get a cubed b cubed equals 1 over 27. And then the second equation stays as is. Now notice that I can uh, isolate from one of the equations, uh, I can isolate b cubed. 
and write it as 6 minus a cubed. So this is going to be critical in solving our system. So let's go ahead and substitute that here. And we're going to get a quadratic equation from here. Let's see how that goes. So a cubed times b cubed, b cubed, I'm going to replace with 6 minus a cubed. And the product is equal to 1 over 27. So this is in fact a quadratic equation, even though it looks like 6 degree, it, um, it doesn't have anything besides the 6th power and the 3rd power, so it can easily be turned into a quadratic equation by using substitution, of, of course. So I'm going to say a cubed, uh, I don't know, let's set it equal to y. So suppose a cubed equals y. So that gives me, and you know y, right? Okay. So I'm going to replace a cubed with y, so it's going to be y times 6 minus y equals 1 over 27. And then if you distribute, you get 6y minus y squared equals 1 over 27. I would like to multiply both sides by negative 1, so that I can get a negative um, positive y squared. And that is going to be this one. Now, uh, my goal is to complete the square. As you should know, y squared minus 6y plus 9 is y minus 3 quantity squared. So if I can add 9 to both sides, then I get a perfect square. And this becomes a negative 1 over 27 plus 9, which can then be written as 9 times 27 uh, minus 1 divided by 27. And that is going to equal 242 divided by 27. Great. Now the left hand side, remember, is a perfect square, so I can write it as y minus 3 quantity squared. And the right hand side, this number, I'm going to write it, um, you know, as a product of two fractions, one of which is a perfect square. So how about 121 over 9 multiplied by 2 thirds? Awesome. So 121 over 9 is 11 thirds squared, uh, which is nice because now I can square root both sides and I get plus minus, of course, don't forget that, 11 over 3 and then multiply by the square root of 2 thirds. But the square root of 2 thirds can be written as root 2 over root 3 and then obviously I do want to rationalize the denominators and write it nicely. So from here we get the following. y minus 3 becomes uh, plus minus 11 root 6 over 3 times 3 which is 9. And then now I'm going to add 3 to both sides that's going to look like this, 3 plus minus 11 root 6 over 9, and that can be written as 27 plus minus 11 root 6 divided by 9. Finally, okay, I got my y value, but y was not my goal. Uh, where does y come from? Let's go back. y is equal to a cubed, and my, my goal is to find a and b, because if you remember, we're trying to solve for x, and x was written as a plus b. If you go back all the way here, x is equal to a plus b, so I want to be able to find a and b, obviously. So to get to a and b, I'm going to back substitute, so y is equal to a cubed. So a cubed equals 27 plus minus 11 root 6 over 9. At this point, I kind of need to cube root both sides, and that's a long process, so I'm going to skip that part but give it to you uh, directly. Uh, but the idea is basically you can write the, uh, this as... Uh, you can write the a as, you know, I don't know, m plus n uh, root 6, and then cube it and uh, set it equal to a cubed, and from there you can find m and n, because m and n are rational in this case. Anyways, to keep a long story short, from here, a is either 3 minus root uh, 6 over 3, or 3 plus root 6 over 3, because of the plus minus, there are two solutions. If a is 3 minus root 6 over 3, then b becomes 3 plus root 6 over 3, and in the second case, it becomes the other way around. So it's like they're conjugates, A and B are conjugates, because um, their product is rational and uh, the, the, the cube, but well, anyways, AB is uh, rational and AQ plus B cubed is all rational. A plus B is also rational. Anyways, our goal is to find A and B, so it doesn't matter which um, pair you pick, but X is gonna give you the same answer both of them. So if like, if you go with the first one, then we're going to get the following if we add these up. Obviously, root 6 is going to cancel out. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So x becomes 2, and this brings us basically to the end of the first method. So x equals 2. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. 
The second method is obviously uh, nicer or shorter, whatever. I have x cubed equals x plus 6. You already know that we have this cubic. Let's put everything on the same side as before. Now I'm going to manipulate the negative 6. You probably already guessed that there is an integer solution here or use the rational root theorem, whatever. But I can write this as x cubed minus 8 minus x plus 2 equals 0. And now it's factorable by grouping. So this is difference of two cubes. And that's going to become this. And then minus 1 times that. Now, if we put it together, x, oops, that's supposed to be x minus 2, not x plus 2. And from here, we get x minus 2 multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus 1. That's going to be a 3. Now, by setting it equal to 0, uh, you notice that this gives you complex solutions, right? So they're going to be complex and non-real complex. And this is going to be the only real solution and x equals 2, we basically get the same answer from here. This should normally bring us to the end of the video, but I'm going to show you real quick the graph of this function y equals x cubed minus x minus 6. And as you can see here, we do have an x-intercept at negative 2 comma 0. And uh, those are the minimum and maximum. And they should also give you an idea because by using the derivatives, you can kind of like differentiate this expression 3x squared minus 1, set it equal to 0. And now you're going to find the critical points, replace the x with those values in the original function, you find the y values, you notice that they're both negative, so on and so forth. And that should also give you some idea. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.